Hello and welcome to the Headache Doctor Podcast. I'm Dr. Taves, joined by Dr. Storzbach. How are you doing, Dr. Storzbach? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. And we had this crazy change in pressure yesterday. We had, mm-hmm. I think, upwards of 100 mile per hour winds in uh, in Colorado, Colorado Springs specifically, and I think Denver was impacted by it as well. And I actually had a tree that blew over and it's now resting on the side of my house. Yeah. yeah glad my house was there to catch it. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. I, yeah. Didn't want its fall to be too hard. <laughs> um, so anyways, we're dealing with that. But part of why, uh, part, part of why I tell that story is because we're going to talk about pressure changes today and why pressure changes can be a trigger for people with headaches and migraines. Mm-hmm. We had a video that we posted on our uh, on our social media pages, TikTok and Instagram. And it was just sort of relating to people that have uh, headaches and migraines that are triggered by pressure changes. And so Bria uh, at the front desk, she, she was standing outside and the, and the wind was blowing her hair like sideways. And the whole idea of the video was showing her with a migraine and not understanding where it was coming from and then realizing that the barometric pressure had dropped outside and that explained um, what triggered it. And so we want to dive into that and explain uh, what's going on here, maybe bust some myths that are out there. And this is an area that is generally confusing for people because as far as we were able to find, there's really not much good solid material. There's not a good answer for why this is happening. And that's that's true for a lot of things we research in the headache and migraine department. And so we're we're kind of used to that by now. But again, we we have a very um, reasonable answer sort of theory behind why this is happening. And uh, and so what we're going to do is walk you through um, why we think it's happening, uh, kind of build a case for that. And then we'll provide you with uh, things to think about and take home and like how do we treat it because that's one thing that people comment all the time on our social media pages well Mm -hmm. you know i have these headaches and migraines that are triggered um, by pressure changes but what do i do about it now Mm -hmm. so barometric pressure change Um, how how common is this well so like you said we see this really commonly in the clinic as a trigger for people Um, And we just, we couldn't find a lot in the research, but there was one very small study of 28 people or patients and 18 of them said that they had experienced an atmospheric barometric pressure change that had triggered a headache. So that's like around 60 some percent, which I would say probably lines up though with the amount of people that come in here and say, oh yeah, that's definitely one of my triggers. So it's actually quite common. Yeah. Yeah. And, And that's, we couldn't find a robust amount of data on that. Um, I actually found a blog post where a gentleman was, a uh, gentleman or lady, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually get the author, but um, was writing about their migraines and connected to pressure changes, and uh, they got a lot of feedback. So there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with this. Mm-hmm. And on our TikTok page in particular, when we post that video, I think it has a couple hundred thousand views. So there's definitely people out there that are dealing with this, because mm-hmm. if there weren't it... Uh, probably wouldn't have gone anywhere. So we believe that it's a big problem, um, something that a lot of people experience. Mm-hmm. Another element of this that we'll talk about is flying on an airplane. And so that might sort of grab another um, percentage of people that experience a headache or migraine triggered from flying on an airplane. Or or maybe it's like, like dizziness or just sinus pressure, or things like that that come about from flying. So that's a part of what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just start with the basics and look at what's what's happening with pressure gradients, storms, like what, what's, what's kind of the gist of uh, what's happening. Well, so um, the main relationship we should remember is um, barometric pressure is inverse or opposite of height away from the Earth's surface. So closer to the Earth's surface, there's higher pressure. And as you go up towards the clouds, it lowers. That's just kind of the general, like in our atmosphere. Now, what happens during a storm is um, high pressure likes to move towards low pressure. And so sometimes these two areas will collide and pressure will drop quickly and dramatically. And that creates a storm. That's also what's creating a lot of these triggers for headaches and migraines, it's it's actually the drop in pressure. And we looked at a few articles um, and it looks like 
there is like a specific amount that they, you know, actually um, matters as far as what triggers a, a headache or migraine. Yeah, the, the, the amount of change. Yeah, thank you. The amount from, of change yeah. from high to low. Yeah. And that's uh, measured in a couple different ways. Um, there was one article that measured it in hecto, what are these called? Hectopascals. And they basically said anything more than a five hectopascal change um, or drop would increase headache or migraine days for people. And then actually when it increased again, five or more, then the headache days decreased. Now I started looking at other things and a lot of what you'll find, um, at least in Colorado Springs, they measure that in inches of mercury. So really that creates, uh, or the similarity of five hectopascals actually means like 1.5 inches of mercury. And I think you found that on the guy that has kind of gone around the world and measured this, that basically a change of 0.2, or I would argue 0.15 or greater, um, between a certain amount of time, like between two hours, is a really significant change and can trigger a headache. Yeah, so if you're someone that has headaches or migraines triggered by pressure changes, uh, maybe at the next social outing you go to, if there's a storm coming the next day, you can ask people what the hecto pascal drop is looking like and just just yeah you'll yeah we're, we're making smarter people out there right um yeah <laughs> well it's one thing like when i pull up my weather app it is something that i think they put on there but i've never looked at it or thought about it or understood like what does this point to change mean or like it seems like such a small amount why would that matter but obviously in inches of mercury even just the point two makes a big difference yeah yeah or the hectopascal scale. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's what you're looking at. Is for, if, if you out there listening um, are the type that follows weather patterns, and I think that is one of the more common like um, hobbies that people have is following mm -hmm. the weather. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do that as much, but uh, especially if you're someone that is triggered, your headache or migraine is triggered by this. Um, that point two number uh, can be useful for you. And uh, is that, do they predict that? Is that? Yeah. They so do. Okay. They do. And they'll um, obviously show like a record of from yesterday to today, but they will also predict what's to come. And there's even, um, I think we were going to talk about this at one point. We found this company that does earplugs. Um, I think they're called Weather X earplugs. And what the, they go into your ear and they're supposed to slow down the pressure change that your inner ear feels or senses. And um, with their purchase, you get an app that will alert you and say, this pressure change in your area is expected to happen. You should put in these earplugs before it happens. So they're definitely predicting it. And there's even an app out there now that you can follow. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there might be a couple other brands. I, I think I ran across one that was like air plugs or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's some competing brands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what you're looking for is that point to drop and it's typically the the drop in pressure mm -hmm. um, where people are will experience that headache or migraine trigger so uh, other than just knowing a point to drop what may lead to a headache or migraine what what's happening there um so well a couple things is there's a difference obviously in sinus pressure primarily and then we're also going to talk about joint capsule pressure which i think as pts we're a little more concerned about but definitely i know you have a story of being on a, a airplane and coming down and having like a horrible what we would probably consider a sinus headache right in the sinus area above your eye and what is happening is your body has to regulate the amount of pressure um, in your sinus cavities and when there's a quick drop and you aren't able to regulate or say you've had a, some mucus in there from a cough or cold and it's already a little congested, that pressure just really builds and it can cause a headache. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're just talking about pressure gradients. Mm -hmm. So barometric pressure is the pressure outside of our body and, and then our body has to um, regulate that. And so... Uh, our sinuses are regulating that constantly. Our joints are having to regulate um, the amount of pressure within them. And, and so what we're looking at is a disruption in the body's ability to regulate that pressure gradient. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not normal for us to um, go through life and, and have 
headaches that come about from a pressured change. Uh, that's not a normal experience. It might be common for a lot of people, um, but it's not something that we should expect because the body has um, the ability to regulate that um, on its own. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when that ability is not functioning the way it should, that's when we see these headaches and migraines pop up or, or the sinus pressure. And yeah, this one, I do actually have a personal story on. I, I felt like my brain was going to explode mm -hmm. and like legitimately thought like I might die. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've heard that from a lot of patients too. This is not a fun experience, but I was flying from Iowa to California and it was on the descent. Well, I was actually kind of halfway through the flight, but specifically on the descent where it got really, really bad. Um, and I was with uh, a bunch of my uh, college sort of classmates and um, yeah, I remember the person next to me trying to talk to me and I just was burying my head in my arms because I just didn't know what to do. Um, and I do believe I was a little bit like congested uh, that day. And so there's some sinus pressure that was already there and um, that just built over the flight. And uh, I, I can make sense of it now, but when it was happening, it, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really know what was going on. And it, it took hours for it to sort of, um, yeah, regulate and uh, for that pressure to go away. Yeah. But it was, it was really scary. That's what I tell people is like, you know, my, my kind of potentially migraine like experience, mm -hmm. which was probably more pressure related than like neck tension related. But I, I do believe at that time I, I was dealing with a neck issue, um, sinus pressure and flying. And it was just kind of the perfect storm of everything. And that's, that's what we hear um, from our patients often as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like every flight you have to experience this, but there are things that can compound to lead to that. Yeah, there was one article I read um, that kind of said there really is no good, or the data they have collected doesn't say that just pressure change will trigger a migraine, that there has to be other factors involved. So, and you know, we would argue that a lot of that time it's actually a neck issue, a movement issue, and also a joint capsule issue. Um, which ironically, when we were looking through all these articles, like no one was talking about. Um, but like you said, our body is not just regulating from outside to inside. There's also a capsule kind of like a tissue surrounding every joint that also regulates pressure outside of the capsule versus inside of the capsule. And there's like a happy, you know, place where they should keep that pressure and your body does that homeostasis thing, finding the balance. And then you can have a joint capsule disruption, right? That can happen with a surgery, uh, arthritis, and honestly, a movement disorder where the joint doesn't move as well, the capsule is not being regulated well, and then it allows too much pressure change to happen. And then you can feel that up into your head because we know those nerves coming out of the upper neck feed into the head. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of adding, um, yeah, what's already irritated or inflamed or painful it's adding stress it's adding just another thing to complicate what's not working well mm -hmm. and the normal response for that area is to send pain uh, into the head or the face so it kind of activates um, this trigeminal pathway or these sensory nerves um, that are going to send pain into the head or the face and so it's really if you think about almost everyone I would imagine knows someone or has heard of someone that can tell when the pressure is going to change, like when, when it's going to rain or when there's going to be uh, you know, a cold front or whatever. And they can tell that because they'll say my joints are stiff. Mm -hmm. um, I have a knee replacement and I can always tell when it's stiff or when it gets achy, that's when um, the, the pressure is going to change. And I don't know why it's so hard for researchers to take that same reasoning and what's known mm -hmm. as barometric pressure connecting to joints uh, and specifically joints that aren't functioning well and connect that to the neck. And so this is something that um, for us really just makes a ton of sense mm -hmm. as far as like headaches and migraines. There's a, there's a lot of other things we've talked about that makes sense as far as headaches and migraines being a neck issue. Mm -hmm. But this is one additional thing where it's like, hey, this explains it perfectly. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be this great mystery that we need, you know, ongoing research after research. And, and you know, we all oh, we need to explore the depths of this. 
um, I think this is a very reasonable explanation. Um, and yeah, research to confirm it would be great. But for the most part, like, I think we can kind of check the box and move on. Mm -hmm. Um, just because it makes There's so much so sense. so much anecdotal, you know, research is all about research, which is good, but it kind of sometimes takes out like the everyday anecdotal experience of real people every day and clinicians, um, and their patients. And that I just think, yeah, there's so much of that with this specifically that I think we can kind of make that leap a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that we hear all the time is people say, I feel listened to, you know, I, I found you through uh, social media, your podcast, whatever. And they they say, you guys understand what I'm going through. Um, and so if we get caught in the weeds of trying to explain these things outside of like, let's just, uh, let's just look at what people are experiencing and put that into a framework that we already understand of the body. Um, and it really does make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And so, um, kind of our, we'll transition into, you know, what, what we think you should do about it or what, how do we treat it? Because we get that question, um, through our social media pages, and so we want to help you understand what to do about it because we don't want you to feel like you need to move you and your family to another state. Um, and actually, why don't we hit on that real quick? Because um, the message is that we don't want you to move, but there are areas in the country that experience less frequent um, fluctuations and pressure changes. Mm -hmm. So this, um, and I'll just list off the URL that I'm on securevideo.com and they have a wonderful blog by JT Taylor. So if you want to find this resource, resource um, the title is Global Barometric Variation, Annual Maps and Monthly Raw Data. So what JT did was compiled information on different areas in around the world actually that um, see the most pressure changes uh, that cross that threshold of 0.2 change. Uh, and, they, and JT actually used within a two hour uh, framework within, a, within two hours. So 0.2 change within two hours. And it's really interesting. So Denver actually uh, ranked as the highest. So there were 34 days with that 0.2 change. And that was significantly higher than any other area that's reported on here. And, and then he also has a percent hours with the 0 0.2, yeah, the 0 0.2 change, and that was 50. Um, but if we're just looking at the number of days where a barometric change might trigger a headache, it was 34, which is, yeah, that's a lot, mm -hmm. significant. Um, and then after that, we've got uh, Chicago. So that was at the O'Hare airport that they pulled that data windy city yeah right right <laughs> exactly um and then we also have like salt lake city and then what's interesting is that san francisco san diego los angeles were very low i mean it's like mm -hmm. two five and three i mean come on california you have all the good things and now you have to take this too but whoa, whoa they don't have all the good things it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so and he transitioned, JT transitioned into a um, global map. And this map is really cool because it shows different colors and those colors represent the, um, yeah, the pressure changes uh, in that specific. And, and it's really correlates to latitude quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so in these more sort of tropical climates, um, you have more blue color, which is, basically saying like they have very few days with that traumatic change in pressure. Um, and then as you get up in the U S in particular, uh, a few things were noted. One is that California in general has a much less frequent, uh, percentage change or, or barometric pressure drop. <clears throat> and so California is kind of a safe spot. Um, Florida as well. The East coast was a little bit higher than the West coast. And then the the mountain time zone uh, was particularly high. So that's kind of where we are. Mm -hmm. And so a good place to have a headache center, right? Yeah, there you go. We got all the patients right here. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, we don't want you guys to feel like you have to move because we feel like there's a solution outside of moving. Yeah. But that's kind of understanding, like if, if you live in Denver, 
and you're like, man, I, I moved here a year ago and I'm experiencing all these migraines. I didn't used to have migraines. The altitude could be playing into it. And then also this frequent pressure change, mm -hmm. especially if you move from California or Florida, which a lot of people here have moved from, yep. um, California in particular. So that's, yeah, that's just a little helpful piece of information, but how do we treat this? Well, so we always go back to the neck, right? Because we just talked about that joint dysregulation in the joints of the neck specifically. And so if we can get those joints to move better and have that capsule basically surround the joint more holistically, basically, um, then this should not be a trigger for people because we always discern between the cause and a trigger. So, I, you know, we are big believers that there are a lot of triggers out there, but they're not the underlying source or cause of your pain. Whereas if we can treat the neck appropriately, you have much more threshold to do things like get on an airplane or travel somewhere or go through a storm and not be triggered into a headache or migraine. Yeah. Yeah. So reducing the initial injury, the, the initial dysfunction uh, that you're experiencing, um, that's, what, that's how we treat it. And um, we see frequently in the clinic that people can get out of this. Mm -hmm. Now the barometric pressure changes as a trigger is something that um, it's one of those triggers that can be difficult to get out of, uh, but we do see it happen. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, just even yesterday again with our crazy weather, I had some patients this morning and asked them all like, Hey, how'd you, how'd you do? And most of them totally fine, which is a change, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exciting. They don't have to think about um, moving across the country just to, mm -hmm. to escape their, their headaches or migraines. And, um, and so that's, that's a little bit of hope that we want to give you guys is if we can treat the neck appropriately, that will put you in the category of someone who can fly and not have to worry about getting a headache or migraine, uh, or can, can go through a pressure change and live in Denver mm -hmm. and, and be totally fine. You can, um, deal with 60 to hundred mile per hour winds, have a tree that falls in your house and not have to worry about a migraine. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of all we know about barometric pressure and, uh, all we think that is important to understand. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, if you have questions, if you have more insights that you would like to provide us, please reach out to us. Our email is hello at noveraheadachecenter.com. And, uh, we love to hear from you guys mm -hmm. and, uh, we, we'd love to get more topics, things that you guys are interested in. Uh, follow us on our Instagram account, uh, Novera Headache Center on TikTok. We're the Headache Doctor, um, just like this podcast. And uh, yeah, subscribe so that you can continue to listen uh, to each episode as it comes out every week. Uh, this is the Headache Doctor podcast. And as always, it's our mission to educate and empower everyone with headaches and migraines to break free from a life of fear and dependence and thrive in everything you do. Thanks for listening.